there's an industrial park off the shoreline that has its own railroad and fleet of engines. Gilbert is one of these diesel engines. Him and his friends take all the cars from the industries and take them to the running track where they're switched onto a mainline train and they, they drop off all the inbound cars. One day, Chris was puffing along with a freight train that had some cars bound for the industrial park. When she arrived, she noticed Gilbert looking pretty sad. What's wrong, Gilbert? asked Chrissy. Chrissy, I love the work I do, but I wish I could have longer runs like you and Taylor do. It would be fun to run down the main line with a train for a day. I'm sorry you feel that way, said Chrissy sympathetically. They exchanged cars and Chrissy puffed away. She wished she could make Gilbert feel better. Then an idea popped into her piston. Yes, she said, I'll do it tomorrow. The next morning, Gilbert brought up the outbound cars as usual. And Chrissy puffed down the line with the train that included some inbound cars. To Gilbert's surprise, she backed all the way down onto the Industrial Railroad. What are you doing? She asked. We're gonna switch jobs today. I'm gonna do your switching here, and you're gonna do my job on the main line. Oh, thank you, Chrissy, shouted Gilbert. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure, smiled Chrissy. Now get going. Gilbert was soon coupled to Chrissy's train, and he set off happily along the line, while Chrissy began making deliveries. Taylor was working with the little engines in Denville. She was expecting Chrissy to arrive, but was surprised to see Gilbert. Hello, Taylor, called Gilbert with a smile. Gilbert, what are you doing here? Asked Taylor. Me and Chrissy switched jobs for the day, so I could finally have a long run. Well, since you're here, said Taylor, you might as well do Chrissy's next job. What is her next job? He said determined. I'm ready for anything to take those coal cars to the steelworks, Stacy answered. I'll get right on it, Gilbert said, and he rumbled toward the coal hoppers. Chrissy was enjoying herself too. Switching cars was a nice change from running down the main and branch lines all day. The industrial park has these special switches called spring switches. They're designed to spring into place when a train is running in the trailing direction. But trains must not stop halfway over these switches in case they have malfunction. Chrissy knew all about spring switches when talking to Gilbert, but she forgot this most important operating rule. Chrissy had just dropped off a boxcar at a warehouse and was beginning to position herself so she could go on to another siding. She rolled backwards. The spring switch did its job all right, but she stopped while a flat car lumber was halfway over it. Once she was ready, she began to move forward. Then it happened. One truck went one way, and the other truck went the other. Stop, Chrissy! Stop! shouted her driver. By the time Chrissy realized what was going on, it was too late. The flat car became derailed between the two lines. Well, that's torn it, said her driver. Chrissy felt awful. Meanwhile, at the steelworks, Ross, who was also expecting to see Chrissy, was surprised to see Gilbert. Hello, said Ross. I'm Ross. Who are you? I'm Gilbert. I work in the industrial park by the shoreline. Chrissy was nice enough to switch jobs with me, so I could do something different for a change. Well, that was certainly nice of her, smiled Ross. You can go get refueled over there. I'll shunt your coal cars away. Thank you kindly, said Gilbert. Sometime later, Gilbert went to go collect his steel cars for the journey back. The switch behind him was set against him, but Gilbert believed that all industrial areas had spring switches, so he proceeded backwards anyway. Ross saw what was about to happen. Stop, stop, shouted Ross, the switch is against you. Don't you have spring switches here? Called Gilbert. Spring what? Suddenly, Gilbert realized his mistake and quickly slammed on the brakes. But his air hoses weren't connected to the flat cars. 
So they pushed them on. With a loud blank, Gilbert rumbled over the switch and came to a stop. After making sure he was still on the rails, he was given permission to proceed further back so they can inspect the switch itself. The steelworks foreman shook his head. This switch is jammed. It'll take a few days to repair it. Ross glared at Gilbert, who felt very silly indeed. <sighs> I'm very sorry to say, but Mr. Stonewall, Gilbert's manager, and Mr. Egan weren't pleased with their two engines. Derailed flat cars and damaging switches? We're surprised at you, said Mr. Egan sternly. Both engines felt ashamed. It was my fault, sighed Chrissy. I'm the one that decided to switch jobs, but I'm the one that put the idea in your smoke box to begin with, Gilbert said. You're both to blame for this. You two should know better than to switch jobs without asking somebody, Mr. Stonewall said angrily. We know, said Christy. We promise it'll never happen again. It better not, said Mr. Regan. And as this is your first offense, I won't be punishing you. Same goes for you too, Gilbert, Mr. Stonewall added. Both engines were relieved. So in the end, Gilbert went back to working at the industrial park. But Mr. Regan eventually decided that every now and then, he could take a local train down to Denville. He also said that if Gilbert did well, he'll let him take a local passenger train. And just the thought of not only getting more long runs, but taking people made Gilbert a much more happier engine.